हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग टीचर हेलो हाउ आर यू आई एम अ लिटिल सिक ओह माय गॉड जोसे कार्लोस यू साउंड वेरी सिक या बट आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ आई एम कोविड और व्हाट हैपेंड टुमारो आई विल बी नो इट Oh my god if i am covid if i have covid <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my god and, and have you had fever and all these different symptoms no 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 only headache uh -huh. and that's it all yeah because uh well the last time that i was very sick they told me well if you don't have a fever then it's not possible to be covid and i was like oh, well thank god <clears throat> Yeah. So hopefully it's not going to be that. So uh, uh, let's yes. let's wait for it not to be COVID because okay. it is very very bad. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's not going to be that. We were missing you the other classes. Well, yes, um, that was I on Monday, huh? Yes. No. Yes. 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 On um, on Monday. You started to feel sick. Yes, I started to feel sick on Monday. Oh my god! So yes, so, it, it was like, yeah, it's kind of impossible for you to be like. Well, hopefully, it's not going to be that, right? Yeah. So let, let's wait. And it's because okay. you are there outside your house with all the rain on your back <laughs> at the moment of yes, the class. Yes, that is true. That's why. No, I, I, I went out on Sunday. So I believe the raining. Ah, that's why. Because you went to see Varland, huh? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so. I went to see my wife has another house close to my house. It's near uh -huh. already two kilo two kilometers or kilometers. Kilometers, uh -huh. Two kilometers yeah. or kilometers, yeah. both are correct. Two, two kilometers, and so we decided to walk. And ah, so we, and we it started raining. Back, It started to rain a lot, but too fast. Oh Not my. graduated too fast. And then on Monday, I started to feel sick. Oh, And my God. <laughs> so for that reason, I believe that it was for for raining. Oh, And my God. For COVID. And so Monday, I feel really bad. And Tuesday also. And now I feel bad, but not the same as yesterday uh -huh. or, or before. So yesterday it was it was perfect for you not to have classes. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was crazy, but really crazy with the rain and everything. So uh, here, like two uh, two houses from my house, there was a tree, a very big tree, uh, a very yes. a very big mango tree, and so there was like with all the wind and everything, it fell down, and it took all the cables of the electricity of the neighborhood. <laughs> wow. So all the neighborhood was without electricity. Yes. So Close that's to my near to my house. Sometimes there are trees who broke up their branch. That break, uh -huh, that that break their branches. Yes, but the last one I remember I was in the class when. <laughs> yes, I remember. We we remember we remember that you run. Yes. That you run out live, from the class. Yes. Here where I live, the the village is Las Vegas. However, <laughs> el, el <laughs> Las Vegas. Ya, ya así en, en grueso, lo, todos los que se dio se llama, le llaman la brisa del bálsamo. And that's why, <laughs> a good name. There's a lot of trees close to my I, house. I imagine. So it, it is. It has a very good name. So yesterday, I hope all the rest welcome everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Sorry for yesterday. It was very crazy to connect and everything. I didn't have electricity, internet, battery, anything. I didn't have anything. But most of you, how how was everything near your houses? People, how was everything near your houses yesterday? Was it good, bad, okay, so-so, floated? 
in my case, teacher, uh, unfortunately, was okay because uh, <laughs> I always have to run too. But uh, yesterday, thanks God, nothing happened. <laughs> no, thank God. Yeah, definitely thank God because it, yeah. it was everything was good. So, yeah. In the case of Nelson, you didn't have electricity, or what happened with you yesterday? Mr. Nelson? Oh, the microphone. Sorry, we don't have it. Hello. Hi. What happened Hi. yesterday near your house? Didn't you have electricity or what happened? Or your internet was bad or something? Yes, yeah, a problem with the audio. Ah, yeah, right now you have problems with the audio. I can see. <laughs> but don't worry, Nelson. It's good to have you here. So uh, we're going to work today. So I can as... your deep or no? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So hello, Yvette, hello, Olga, Mr. Manuel, and Miss Christia, Diana is coming. She said that she's on her way to the class. So today we are going to work a little bit on uh, what we were doing on Monday, right? I feel strange that we had Monday, nothing, and Wednesday, right? <laughs> So uh, on Monday, we were talking about the adverbs, right? Do you remember the different types of adverbs that we have? Time. Time. Um, manner. Manner, good. Agree. Agree, Agree. yes, Agree. degree, degree. <laughs> Ah, degree, but I have agree. <laughs> <laughs> degree and agree, it's another thing. Okay. Place. Place, very good. What else? Quantity. Quantity, very good. The most common ones? Frequency. Frequency, manner. right? Frequency and okay. manner, right? The, those are the most common ones, right? The most common adverbs are frequency and manner, right? Those are the most common things that we have as part of the forms of adverbs, right? Good. What is something that makes adverbs a little bit different from any other type of word? Whoa. Do you remember? L-Y. The L-Y, right? The L-Y. Excellent. I sent you a list of, ad of adverbs on the, on the chat, right? I sent it to you. I sent you the list for you to have them there, for you to have them ready, and for you to know a little bit more of them, right? So um, you, have them, you have them there on your chat, right? I sent them to you yesterday. And um, so uh, with the different definitions also, I sent you the different categories for you to have them. Today, we are going to work a little bit on them. We're going to create some sentences and we're going to use them as part of the class, right? I have prepared a couple of exercises on which we are going to use the different adverbs that we already studied. And we're going to check a little bit on the platform as well, because we have been doing a lot and most of you have already finished, right? But some of you are having difficulties with a specific words. So we are going to work a little bit on that today as well, okay? So let's start. Let's start as, uh, as I was explaining you. And for sure, hopefully we are not going to have any difficulty with uh, the class today, okay? So let me see. I have my screen already shared here and just remember our agreements, right? The agreements of our classes. Please practice your English as much as possible. Ask for help whenever you need. Keep your cameras on all the time, right? I am going to ask you please to do that uh, because it's part of the requirements. <clears throat> Keep your microphones off if we're not using them. Participate as much as possible. Keep a cooperative attitude during class. Collaborate with your friends if it's needed on the WhatsApp group. And for sure, work on the platform every single day. Thank you for all the ones who already finished every exercise on the platform. Recuerden, chicos, que si de repente hay algún ejercicio que lo han dejado con 75 o con 80 porque les salió alguna respuesta incorrecta, termínenlo para que su plataforma quede el 100% completa. Okay? Si tienen... Yes? 
but I have a problem with that because uh, the last part of the platform is in Spanish. And mm -hmm. I yes i can finish because it's in spanish i think it is on the on the okay on the conf, uh, you you go to configuraciones in the navigador de internet y ahí le tiene que cambiar el idioma creo que ese es ha de ser el problema i look for that but, but you, you haven't found it no pero lo demás está en español en inglés está raro porque unas partes están en inglés y otras en español Ajá, porque ahí quizás es el problema del navegador. Ya probó con otro navegador, abrir la página en otro navegador. Ah, eso sí, no lo intenté. Ajá, abre en otro navegador. Si lo tiene, por ejemplo, en, en, en Explorer, puede abrirlo en Firefox, en Firefox o en Google, en Chrome, eh, para ver si es el problema del navegador, porque muchas veces es eso, que el navegador está configurado para traducir automáticamente. Ajá, ese, pensé que esa era, era esa opción y, 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 y lo busqué para como para tra traducirlo, pero bien raro porque unas partes estaban en inglés y otras en español. Sí, porque justo el día lunes estuvimos trabajando en la plataforma eh, con, con, este, con los que se quedaron al final y sí, estaba todo correcto. Aún este. Sí, de... estaba, ajá, sí, yo lo había visto así, pero bueno, la última parte dije yo, quizás ya no me había fijado y hablaron de eso y yo no supe. Pero... <risa> me lo pusieron en español. <risa> es raro porque dije yo, aquí no, no, no le encuentro cómo es. <risa> Uh, yeah, it, well, but that that is good. That it's good that you didn't understand that in Spanish. It's like I, I need my English back. <laughs> so yes, uh, so I think it is it is good if you go and check on the on the um, on the different on a, on a different platform, right? Try another another uh, source of internet and uh, let me know. Okay, try another source of of internet and tell me if it works. And if it works for sure, eh, there's no problem, right? But if, if it doesn't work, we need to report it. So eh, try, try to do that, please. And let me know if you can okay. do it after the class, that would be perfect, okay? Try it and let me know. If it works, then it was the problem of the, of the navigator, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for letting me know about those things, right? Because in some cases, we, we, really, um, we really need, it. and maybe another person is experiencing the same problem, okay? So I have a couple of questions for us to practice a little bit of the adverbs. In this case, the adverbs of frequency. We are going to practice the adverbs of frequency with the following questions. And it says the first one, how often do you eat fast food for lunch, people? How often do you eat fast food for lunch? Do you know what's fast food, right? Comida rapida. Usually. I usually, right? So remember, if you answer, you say like, I usually eat fast food for lunch, right? I usually eat fast food for lunch. Very good. Uh huh. What about Manuel or Yvette? Yeah. I usually eat fast food for lunch because hey. <coughs> uh, every day I I have the opportunity to to eat in my in my house. Hey, so that's, well, you don't have the opportunity to eat in your house or you do have? Uh, I, I have. Uh, you have the opportunity yes. to eat yes. in your house? Yes. Hey, that's fantastic. So you don't have to spend money outside. Let's see, Yvette, how often do you eat fast food for lunch? I, um, I, I Ah, sometimes, often, right? And if it is very, like, one day yes and another day no, it's like every other day, it's like, well, I often, I almost always. <laughs> I, I love fast foods, but it's not good for me. And no, it's not good for anybody. <laughs> yeah, and... For this reason, I often fast food. You, you often eat fast food for lunch. Good. Let's see. 
Who likes to sing? Who likes to sing? Raise your hand if you like to sing. Okay, Cristia, you like to sing. Very good. Tell me. I like, but I can't. <laughs> well, I think that if, if you sing for you, it's okay, right? If you sing in the shower, it's okay. What type of music? I do you sing? I would say I love sing, but I know. Uh, <laughs> you are I not know. good. <laughs> Well, I think that the, the, the idea is like how passionate you are about singing, right? With but, all the with all the passion that you put on it. Okay. Yes. Pero no audio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's it's good. So what type of music do you like to sing? Christian and then Yvette. What type of music do you like to sing? Um I really like the, the banda. <laughs> banda music. <laughs> banda music, okay. Banda yes. and pop, okay. <laughs> That's yes, okay. Pop. Okay, very good. Very good. Let's see. People, all of you, how often do you listen to classical music? How often do you listen to classical music? Sometimes in my case. Sometimes. I, I sometimes good. Sometimes. What about the rest? Sometimes. 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 I never listen to classical music. You never listen to classical music. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. They say that it's good for you to concentrate, but I start dancing, right? Even the classical music. <laughs> How often do you go to the movies alone? All the time. Alone? Yes. I am cinephile. Ah, but you love to go. Eh? That's good, right? You love movies, right? That's fantastic. Uh, actually, uh, I go to the movie theater alone. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> no one yeah. is talking to you while you watch the movie. Yes. And what uh, about the rest? Uh huh. Yes, even. I um, I follow. Uh, to watch very movies uh, for I don't have uh, uh, con quien ir? <laughs> someone who go with someone uh -huh. to go with you, uh, you have here all your classmates come on it's a matter of inviting <laughs> aquí, yeah. tiene, mire, aquí tiene variedad mire. solo dice uh, hey quien para ir al cine <laughs> for this reason uh, I decide to uh, go to the movie theater alone. Well, but at, at least it's good because they are not bothering you during the movie. Yes. And the, what about the rest? What about the rest of the students? Do you go to the movies alone? I never go to the movies alone. You never go to the movies alone. Well, I never no. go to the movies. But the rest, you go with someone. In How often? Uh -huh. Manuel, yes. Okay, uh, about the movies. Uh -huh. uh, in my case, I I never go to the movies because I don't like. I prefer mm. to, to watch movies or cartoons in the At edition. <laughs> in the in the cartoon edition. Well, I really love to watch movies at home at home and, and I choose like one or two movies to want to, to check on when one finishes, the other starts and I go like that. I have like mini marathons. Yes. <laughs> I love that one. People, yeah. how often do you go to the beach in summer? How often do you go to the beach in summer? Never. Never. <laughs> Never because I don't want, I, I don't like uh, a lot of people. You don't like uh, when there is a lot of, when there is a big crowd of people, when the places mm -hmm. are crowded. In, crowded. Uh, in vacation. Yeah. I like, I, I, I usually go to the beach. You usually go to the beach. In summer, okay. in summer or, or, or in any other. <laughs> In, yeah. in, in like any other beach. time of the year. Yeah. yeah. Claudia? Yeah. Uh, I frequently go you, to the beach in summer. 
A, that's pretty good. Right, I really love to go to the beach, but I don't like when it is crowded, as Christia was saying. Yes, also. Yeah, okay. and, and I like to go to, to different places, not to the same, right? Because everybody like goes to La like, Costa del Sol, El Tunco, El Mahawal. And it's like the same. <laughs> yeah, it's always yes. the same. Yeah, and there are many other beautiful places that you can go and visit. So I, I really yeah. like that one. Let's see. Uh -huh. What about this question? How often do you text on WhatsApp? I'm always text to WhatsApp. <laughs> All the, time. all the time all the time i think i think now it's like it's like your life is like breathing eating showering changing clothes and checking what's up and texting yes. and watching videos <laughs> it's and part of your life and 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 checking talk, yes. <laughs> it, it is part of your every day i mean it's like you wake up you have to check what's up you are working you yes. need to check uh, you are eating you check what's up i mean it's like everything for example, uh, I can say that all my work, it's there on the WhatsApp because I have uh, the groups, the students, the teachers, everything there in WhatsApp. So it's like, if it disappears, well, I have Google. <laughs> I have but, OneDrive. <laughs> but in, future, in fact, uh, now the WhatsApp is, I think it's a, it's a tool because we, we need uh, the communication exactly like that right you need to move your businesses through there and yes. the next one how often do you check your email how often do you check your email i always check my email regularly regularly usually well i have to constantly checking my email i don't know how with a pc with a pc you do it on your, on the phone on their phone yes okay um, oh by the way talking about the email uh, i think you have the the survey information on your email right ya les enviaron toda su información para la encuesta yes. creo que lo vamos a hacer el día viernes siempre yes. pero tengo que confirmar así que eh, no sé si va a ser el viernes o el día lunes pero tengo que confirmar okay so eh, keep it there we are going to use it that day the last question, how often do you check social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, on all these things that we have, TikTok, LinkedIn, eh, all these things that we have now? I always check my social media. Check social media. You, you always check social media, right? Very good job. Okay, so that is something basic nowadays, right? That you have to check social media and uh, it is part of us. And from these ones, let me see. Uh, this is for the conditionals that we were studying before. That was the practice for the conditional. And I have two questions here. What do you do if you are stressed, people? What do you do if you are stressed? I listen to music, for example. What about you? What do you do if you are stressed? Pictures in my phone. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, never. You never feel stress. Hey. I, 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 I don't know. Hey, well, that's good. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's really. Good. Hey. You, you live in peace. <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. fantastic. You can love people now. <laughs> Peace and love. Very good. What about the rest? What do you do when you feel stressed? When I feel stressed, I like to sing. To Very sing. Loud. To sing yes. out loud. To sing out, out loud. loud. Very good. Out loud. What about Yvette? What do you do when you feel stressed? Um, when I feel stressed, I play in my phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I watch my TV series. Okay, you play in your phone. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> okay, let me see. Mr. Oh, Omar. No, Omar is, is like a listener today. Olga Marleni, what do you do when you feel stressed? Mm, hi, teacher. Hi. In my case, sometimes I like to watch funny videos in myself. Okay. And, and a smile. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, right? You watch 
okay, to check videos on your cell phone, right? And to spend time scrolling it and watching things on it, right? Very good. And the last question, the last question. Um, let me see. Chan, chan, chan. If you call your parents, how long do you talk to them? If you call your parents, how long do you talk to them? One minute, two minutes, an hour. Hey, Christian, you have electricity again. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, I, I love your, your floor. I copied already. <laughs> Okay, if you call your parents, how long do you talk to them? Three minutes, My one hour? Uh -huh. is, uh, I, usually I have less to two minutes. Less than two minutes? Yes. Yeah. I usually talk with my mom uh, around five minutes. Five minutes, good. Jose Carlos? You open your microphone. I thought you were going to say something. Okay, Claudia, how often do you talk to your parents and how long do you talk to them? How often? Mm, normally. I every know. day. So you say every day. In that case, we have to say like, how often do you do it? You answer with a a specific frequency adverb. You say like every day, every month, every morning, every night, right? Okay? Every day. Every day. And every how day. long? How long? Less than a minute. <laughs> Less than a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If there is no gossip, there is no talk. Yes. It's like, eh, te iba a contar, mamá. And you say, like, if there's My like mom. My mother and my sister, they talk about like an hour. <laughs> so, so, and you go a, a straight to the point. Yes. Right? You, go, you go straight to the point. That's fantastic. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for your answers, my dear students. So highlights about your day. We were asking about this before, right? I asked you how, how your day was with the storm and everything. And many of you tell me that you are okay. So uh, before everything, I am going to call the attendance first and we're going to go over the practice for the day, okay? Let me see. Oh, okay, I saw a gecko <laughs> coming down. Let's see, Carolina. I think she's on her way home. Claudia Maria. Present teacher. Christian Natalie. Present. Diana Elizabeth, that was on traffic. Jorge Humberto. Jose Carlos. Present teacher. Jose Rodrigo. Juan de Dios. Linda Ivette. Okay, I have a lot of people on the rain today. Let's see, let's continue. Okay, let me move a little bit here. And, uy. Una de frijol con queso, agregamos. <laughs> Por favor, que sean dos. Ah, <laughs> we want to. Juan de Dios, it's not here today. Manuel Antonio. Present teacher. Okay. Eh, Miguel Ángel Domínguez not here hey Mr. Miguel Ángel I don't know what's going on with him let's continue Nelson Gabarrete Merino presente thank you Norma Carolina Olga Marlene presente teacher Rocío Verónica, Rosa Beatriz, Silvia Zuleima, Tatiana Michelle. Present teacher. Thank you, thank you. Hey, and Silvita, she was, ah, yeah, yeah, I saw it, I saw her already. Ya te vi, ya te vi. <laughs> Vilma Ivet. Present. Marlene Nicole. Omar Francisco. Present. 
En Dani Anthony. Ok, Dani. Dani, Dani. I don't know if you can listen to us, Dani. But I see you there every night. Okay, let's move on business then, right? Yesterday, we were uh, in vacations because we didn't have classes. It was very nice. You were very happy yesterday. And I called the attendance already. Okay, this is what we were studying in the previous class, right? We were studying about the adverbs to qualify verbs, right? Adverbs that you use like efficiently, accurately, consistently, slowly, regularly, and incrementally. In that case, uh, in the first question, how do you have to organize your inventory? How do you have to organize it? Efficiently, right? How do you have to record the information? Accurately, accurately. accurately. How often do you have to check for possible improvement? Consistently. Consistently, right? How do you have to revise the processes? Slowly. Slowly, right? How often do you have to communicate with your distributor? Regularly. Regularly, no. right? Regularly. How are you going to change your inventory practices? Incrementally. Incrementally, right? Or gradually, right? That is very similar to gradually, right? Incrementally. In this case, all of them finish with LY. And this exercise is on the platform as well, right? You have to use the LY endings for the sentences. So I have this little exercise for you. And what you need to do here is that you need to add the adverb in the correct position on the sentence. For example, here you have, I have cereal for breakfast, usually. Where are you going to put the adverb in this sentence? How are you going to transform it? Who can help me with the first one? I have cereal for breakfast, usually. I usually have cereal for breakfast. I usually have cereal for breakfast, right? I usually have cereal for breakfast. In this case, you are going to have the noun, that it's I in this case, the adverb of frequency, usually, the main verb and the complement, right? I usually have cereal for breakfast. What about the next one, number two? Sandra is going to participate in the competition, definitely. Sandra, Sandra definitely, definitely going to participate in the competition. Sandra is definitely going to participate in the competition, right? In this case, the adverbs are going to give you a little bit more emphasis on what you want to do because you say, ah, Sandra is going to participate in the competition. Ah, okay. But if you say, Sandra is definitely going to participate in the competition, it's going to give you a different sense on the sentence, right? It gives you more emphasis at the moment of pronouncing it. What about the number three? I was glad to see Mary after so many years. Really? I really was glad to see Mary after so many years. I was really glad to see Mary after so many years. I was really. I was really glad, right? I was you, you cannot say I really was. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I was really glad, right? In that case, I think you can do it, right? Well, but it gives you a different sense, right? I really, I really was glad to see Mary after so many years. But if you say, I was really glad, it gives you more emphasis when you say, I was really glad to see Mary after so many years. But if you say like, I really was glad to see her. It's like, sí, realmente me agradó verla. But if you say, I was really glad, it was like, estaba realmente feliz, realmente alegre de verla after so many years. We go to the cinema on Saturdays, hardly ever. We hardly ever go to the cinema on Saturdays. We hardly ever go to the cinema on Saturdays because as it is an adverb of frequency, right? It goes after the subject and before the verb, right? We hardly ever go to the cinema on Saturdays. The next one, the two girls were talking when I arrived happily. 
The two girls have were happily talking when I arrived. Very good. The, you, two the two girls were happily talking when I arrived. It gives a different sense if you say, the two girls were talking when I arrived happily. He was like, ah, hello, girls. <laughs> you were the one who were happy if you put it at the end. But the correct part of the sentence is like, the two girls were happily talking when I arrived. And maybe when the person arrived was like, they were not happy anymore. <laughs> it's like, <"Shh." laughs> he, he's coming, right? <laughs> Stop talking. But uh, it is, they were happily talking when I arrived. What about number six? Can you help me with number six? Read it, please. My mother felt extremely tired this morning. My mother felt extremely tired this morning. It was like, oh my God. Uh, extremely tired this morning. It's like, mm -hmm. ¿Y que no dormiste? Sí dormí, pero no descansé. <laughs> That's the same question for everybody every day, right? Yeah. It's like, pero te acabas de levantar. It's like, sí, pero no descansé. Dormí, pero no descansé. <laughs> My mother felt extremely tired this morning. The next one. I have an appointment with the doctor tomorrow. I have an appointment tomorrow with the doctor. Uh -huh. What other options do you have? I have an appointment with the doctor tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Another option that you have? Tomorrow I have an tomorrow. appointment with the doctor. Uh, tomorrow. Very good job. You can have it there. Like tomorrow I have an appointment with the doctor or I have an appointment with the doctor tomorrow. You see, the adverbs of definite frequency, like tomorrow, every day, every morning, every night, every month, can go at the beginning or at the end of the sentence, right? So in this case, you can say, I have an appointment with the doctor next month. Or you say, next month, I have an appointment with the doctor, right? You can use it like that at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. What about number eight? My brother, my brother is, is always complaining, complaining about, everything. about everything. My brother is always complaining about everything. Do you have a brother or a sister that is always complaining about everything? Or yes. you are the one? <laughs> I am the I am the one. Yeah, my because sister. I am the complaining sister. <laughs> Because they always say that in the family, if you have more than one brother or sister, there is always one that it's always complaining. It's like, hey, we're going to eat pupusas. Ay, pupusas, come on. Hey, no, we're going to eat chicken. Chicken again, I know. It's like, hey, do the dishes. I the dishes, I don't want to do the dishes. They, they are always complaining. And if you don't have it, you are. <laughs> so. My son. <laughs> Your son. I, I think they have an, an age, right? Tienen una edad específica. I think we all had it. ¿Cuál fue su edad crítica? Let's go back and remember. What, what, was, what, was your, what was your age? ¿Cuál fue su edad de rebeldía? When I was 14 years. When I was 15. 15, 14, yeah. Manuel? 13. 13. Nelson, ¿cuál fue su edad de rebeldía? 14. <laughs> I, when, I, when I was eh, 15 or 16, I was really rebel. <laughs> My poor mother. Lo siento, madre, tú que me oyes. <laughs> Teacher, I am still being proud. <laughs> I am on that age right now. <laughs> Olga Marlene, what was your 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 rebeldy age? <laughs> I as she reminds, <laughs> she remember. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen, Mr. Jose Carlos. Just so when I when I was 17. 17. 17 to 19 in the high school. <laughs> yes, in high school. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's it's curious that now I am the teacher, right? I am a teacher and I remember everything that I did to my poor teachers on my mm -hmm. rebelty years. Yeah, but it was cool. Y I said like, and, and some students said like, pero licenciada, ¿y usted cómo sabe que eso iba a pasar? And I was like, mm -hmm. life, I said, experiences. Mm -hmm. Silvia Zuleima, what was your, your rebel years? I don't remember, teacher. Um, you were you were the the good girl. I am very pacific. I I am. I was very pacific. You were very pacific. No, I was the one that was jumping out of the school. Yeah. <laughs> but always with ten and in integral prices and and very good grades, right? Siempre me saqué diez y nueve, así que no problem. <laughs> I was just rebel. So good. Hi, ah, I, I was I was taking you back to your rebel years. Let's see. In these ones, you are going to do them alone, right? We did the other ones uh, as a group, but these ones you are going to do them alone. So please, I need you to take notes. I need you to write them down on your notebook, and I need you to have them ready. When you have them ready, I need you to send two of them on the chat. Okay, so we can check them. Okay, do all of them on your notebook, and I need you to do two on the chat, okay? It can be on the WhatsApp chat or on the chat in Zoom, but I need you to send two examples, right? I need you to complete them all. So try not to repeat the examples, right? When you send them on the chat, try to send different ones. And we're going to do the same, right? Upstairs, quickly, already, probably here, almost still and eagerly. Okay, so do the sentences exactly as what we did in the previous exercise, right? Exactly as what we did here, but I need you to do this ones on your notebook and send two of them on the chat. Go ahead.
Okay, I got some on the chat already. One from uh, Jose Carlos. I have Claudia and I have Tatiana. Peter and Sam, and Sam met here every day. My sister probably will go to the to Egypt in summer. In that case, Claudia Maria, remember it says like my sister will probably. Uh, the fact factor factor workers are still on strike. Peter and Sam met here every day. Yes, every day. Remember that it can be at the beginning or at the end of the sentence. It's correct. And Andrew ate his sandwich sandwich quickly. <laughs> it's like, oh, your brother is coming. <laughs> and you ate the sandwich in a very quick way. Good, very good. And I have Manuel Antonio as well. Peter and submit here every day. And the factory workers are still on strike. Good, very good. I have another one. The factory workers are still on a strike. Very good. Thank you, Silvia. You can practice on the other ones. If you want to send another one in the chat, that's okay. For me, it's okay for, for me to check it, okay? Thank you for the capital letter at the beginning and the period at the end. That's important, right? Okay, let me see if I have one on WhatsApp. Cha-cha-chan, mm, cha-cha-chan. Okay, Jorge has problems with the internet. Says. Okay, they have problems with the connection. It is almost impossible. Good, good, very good. Okay. Keep on sending them because I am constantly checking. It is always good for me to check them and to get to see the answers, right? What about number nine? Who can help me to read it? Number nine. Teacher, yep. uh, the children played upstairs in the afternoon. The children played upstairs in the afternoon, right? The children played upstairs in the afternoon. Very good. The next one, number 10. Number 10. Andrew, Andrew ate his sandwich quickly. Andrew ate his sandwich quickly. Very good. Number 11. The football The football match. The football match already started. Had already started, right? Had already started when we arrived right. at the stadium, right? Had already started, right, started. The next one, number 12. 
My sister. sister probably will go to Egypt in summer. My sister will probably go to Egypt in the su in summer. Very very good. What about the number thirteen? Peter and Sam meet here every day. Peter and Sam meet here every day. Very good. What about number 14? It is almost impossible that Anne arrives on time. It is almost impossible that Anne arrives on time. Very good. Number 15. The factory workers are still on a strike. You know what's a strike, right? Do you know what's a strike? I'm not yes. sure. It's like, no, al dolor de estomago. No, al dolor de estomago. No, al dolor de estomago. No, a la, no a la comida de cafetería. No, a la comida de cafetería. <laughs> it's a strike. It's like, no, no, a la no, verdura. no. No, a la verdura. Yeah, they, were, they, they are good. They are good. Come on. They are good. Right. No, a la lluvia. No, a la lluvia. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. I love it. So that's a strike, right? It's a strike. It's when you reveal your feelings against something that it's going on. And number 16. Karen opened. Uh -huh. Early. Early. <laughs> okay. Karen opened her presents eagerly. Eagerly, eagerly on her birthday. Or you can say, eagerly. Karen eagerly opened her presents on her birthday. Eagerly is like, yes, yes, presents, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eagerly is like okay. very, very excited, right? Very excited. It was like, she wanted to do it, eagerly. she did it, and she was very happy about it, right? Eagerly. Are you very careful at the opening presents or you open them eagerly? I am eagerly. <laughs> it's a present, yay! Do you do it? Do you do it in front of the person who gave it to you, or do you wait? I don't wait. The right moment. I wait. <laughs> on the you wait. Okay, you know. I, well, I de depending on the gift, right? Because if it is like a general yeah. gift for everybody, it's like ah, vean los si le gusten. Ah, yeah, mire. Oh, ah, depending ah, on the person. Un termo <laughs> for the one. <laughs> Gracias por estos 20 años de servicio. Una yeah. A shirt. Yeah. An M&M. An &M. A chocolate. I heard cheese. A kiss. Mentiros. <laughs> Come on. Oh, no, no, no. I, I expired. <laughs> no, but any gift is okay, right? Any gift is okay. If it is a gift, it's like, oh, here you have this iPhone. Ah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it has never happened to me, but it might be beautiful, right? It might be beautiful. Nunca me ha pasado, pero ser bonito. So, in these ones, I am going to send them to you because we're going to work in groups, right? We're going to go to work in groups and you have to organize the sentences. I am going to send you the picture of the sentences and you are going to work in groups of three and uh, we're going to complete them, right? You need to organize them. It's either if you want to organize them uh, on paper, if you want to write them, or if you just want to organize them orally, it's okay, right? So you are going to work in groups of three for this exercise. And we're going to create the sentences, right? For example, in the first one, say, often in the afternoon, go for a walk, I. What would be the first one? I often. I no. often go for a walk in the afternoon. I often go for a walk in the afternoon, right? I often go for a walk in the afternoon. Okay, so. Uh, that's what you are going to do. You are going to work together. You are going to organize the sentences and uh, we're going to come back. I'm going to give you like five minutes for this. And let me see. Yes, you're going to have very small groups of so three and four. Okay, so let's go and work. I already sent it to you on the chat and I'm going to enter to all the groups to help you if it's necessary, okay? There you go. Accept my invitation. Thank you.
There you go. Thank you, I'm missing Danny. Danny, Danny, Danny. Mr. Danny, can you listen to me? Okay, so I am going to go to check on the rest of the groups to see how are they going to organize the sentence. So back in one second. Ben, Ben, eight, 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 it's incorrect, teacher. No, it's correct. It's correct. Ah. So, this one. The number three. Left. Let's do this. The student left noisily. The student noisily. Oh. Uh -huh. It says the students. The students did left. what? What what is the verb there? The students what? Left. Left. What? The classroom. The classroom. How? Nicely. Two minutes when? ago. When? Two minutes ago. When? Two minutes ago. Uh-huh. Already. So in that case, that is a very good way for you to create the sentences. For example, in the case of Ben, you say like who? Who was the, the doer of the sentence? Number two? Ben, right? Ben, what did Ben do? Eight. He ate what? He, he ate what? His dinner. His dinner. How? Hungrily. Hungrily. Where? At the restaurant. At the restaurant. I'm sorry. And you create your sentences. And you give a different meaning to the sentence that you are creating. And you understand every single part. Okay, I will check on the other kids to see what they are doing. I will come back in a second. Hello, hello. Hello, Miss. Did you finish? No, yet. Any question about any of the sentences? Or all of them are very easy. <laughs> no, I have a question with the third one. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if the correct positions of the sentence is uh, two minutes ago, two minutes ago, uh, the student left the classroom nicely. I don't know. It's, it can be. For example, in the case two minutes ago, es un adverbio de frecuencia definida, como les estaba diciendo en el, en, en hace unos minutitos. Los adverbios de frecuencia definitiva como every day, every morning, two minutes ago, one minute ago, right? It can be at the beginning of the sentence or at the end. So it can be like two minutes okay. ago, the students left the classroom or the students left the classroom two minutes ago. The ah, most okay. common position is at the end. 
but it's possible to be at the beginning of the sentence. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, continue, continue. Thank you. Verdad? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, number four. Uh, yes. Number four, the children. Uh, wait, teacher uh, number three is uh, the students left noisily the classroom two minutes ago. The students left the classroom. It's like, okay, in este caso, vámonos por partes. Primero, ¿quién es el doer okay. of the action? The students, right? Yes. The students. What is the verb? Left. Uh, left. 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 They left what? Noisily. No, they left what? To the classroom. They left the, the classroom. classroom. How? Uh, Noisily. When? Uh, two minutes ago. Two minutes ago, right? Okay, in number two, for example, who is the doer of the action? ¿Quién es el, 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 el main subject de la número dos? Ben. Ben. What is the verb? Ben. Uh, eight. 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 What? Eight. What did he eat? Okay. What did he eat? Ben ate what? Uh, his dinner. His dinner. How? His dinner. How did he eat? How? Hungry. Hungrily. Hungrily. Where? At the restaurant. At the restaurant, right? So there you have the order of the sentence. What about number hungrily? At the restaurant. Ben ate his dinner hungrily at the restaurant. What about number four? Who is the doer of number four? Who is the doer of number four? The children. The children. What is the verb? Played. 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 Uh, how they? How did they play? How? Uh, ¿Cómo jugaron? Happily. Happily. Where? In the garden. When? Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> there you go. So there you have a way to understand the sentence. Okay. Así ustedes las pueden ir ordenando y se pueden dar cuenta el orden y la lógica de la oración. Right. So like who, what, where, when for you to organize it. Right. The children play in the garden happily. Yes, the, sorry. the children played happily in the garden yesterday right the children played Play. happily Play. in the garden in the garden yesterday porque yesterday ah. como un adverbio de frecuencia definida siempre va a ir al final o al principio yesterday. you can say yesterday the children played happily in the garden or the children played happily in the garden yesterday what about number okay. five in number five ¿Quién es el the sujeto doctor. de la number five? The doctor. The doctor uh, what? The doctor. And the verb? Uh, examine. Examine. Who? Examine. The patient. The patient? How? Carefully. Carefully. Or you can say the doctor carefully examined the patient. In this case, you can move it and you can have it in the two positions, right? The, the, the doctor examined. The doctor examine the patient carefully or he carefully examine the two of them are possible okay. okay good very good finish the other ones i'm going to come back in a second okay hello 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 Buenas. Tomorrow. Teacher, the last one is I will go probably shopping tomorrow. Aha, uh -huh, let's so see. I, I probably will go. No, I think is I will uh, go shopping tomorrow. I will and the and the other? I I probably will go shopping tomorrow. Say I will probably. I will mm -hmm. probably. Probably. I will probably go shopping tomorrow. I will probably go shopping tomorrow. Shopping tomorrow. I will probably go shopping tomorrow. 
What about number seven? Alex goes every to day. every day by bus. Uh -huh. Alex goes every to day school. Alex goes to school by bus. It can be every day Alex goes to school by bus, but the most common part, uh, the most common position for these adverbs of definite frequency is at the end. It can be at the beginning as well, right? Alex goes to school by bus every day. In that case, you have who? Who is the doer of the sentence? Alex. Alex. Uh, what is the verb of the sentence? Go. Goes. Where? To the school. When? Every day. How? Every day. By bus. By bus. You can have it also as well in, in before the end, right? Or Alex goes to school by bus every day. So in this case, it gives different uh, meanings on the positions. Uh-huh. In the number six, we have uh, we have problem because I think is my father always worked hard in his office. Uh huh. Can I, I have think... my father works hard always in his office? Okay, this one as it is an adverb of frequency. Remember that the adverbs of frequency go after the subject and before the verb. So you say, my father always, and the verb works. Okay, siempre el adverbio de frecuencia va a ir después del sujeto y antes del verbo. Solo los de frecuencia. Ajá, los adverbios de frecuencia siempre van ahí. O el único que puede ir al principio es sometimes, y a veces usually. You can say, sometimes my father works in his office, or my father sometimes works in the office. Right, but in that case, as it is always, it has to be after the subject. Okay, we're going to go back and check together, okay? Let's go back to the main. Vea, vimos a Kaiser ahí, del, del de Cristian. Yes, they are evil. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of my dog. Uh, yes, you know, my dog loves when my mother is here, but he just loves when my mother is at home because she's like, mm, and my mother uh, feeds her. He's like, mm, and my mother gives her food. And he's like, oh, and my mother, oh, what is it? She's hungry. <laughs> she's just eating all the time. <laughs> yes. She loves eating and it's eating. And with eating. my mom. <laughs> yes. So my, my mother is always like happy with, with the dog. And my dog is always happy to see her. It's like, ay, pobrecita tiene hambre. She's always hungry. <laughs> y bien gorditos. No, yes. It's like, mama, ya, ya casi lo muevo rodando. <laughs> but she's very happy, right? And she cries when she leaves. And it's like, aha, uh -huh, because she's your source of food. Okay, great. So I was there checking on every single group about the sentences that you were doing. And here, for example, we have a, in the first one, right? We had in the first one, in the first sentence a, that we did together, you say like, I often go for a walk in the afternoon, right? In this case, I was helping some of you with this sentence. For example, who was the doer of the sentence? The main subject was Ben. Mm -hmm. What is the adverb? What is the verb of the sentence? Eight. 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 What? Eight. His dinner. His Eight. dinner. How? Uh, hungrily. 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 Where? At the restaurant. At the restaurant, right? What about the next one? Who is the main actor of the sentence? The students. The students. What did they do? They left. 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 What? The classroom. The classroom. How did they leave? Noisy. Uh, Noisily. Noisy. When? Uh, two, two minutes, minutes ago. 
two minutes ago, right? What about the next one? We have the children. What did they do? Play. Play. Played. Played. How? Happily. Happily. Happy. Where? Yeah, in the, in the garden. In the garden. When? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, right? Very good. What about the next one? Who? The doctor. The doctor. The doctor. What did he do? Examine. Examine. Next. Who? Examine. The patient. The patient. How? Carefully. Carefully. Very good. Or you can say the doctor carefully examined. If the two of them are correct. What about the next one? Who? My father. My father. What does he do? Works. Works. How often does he work? Always. My father always works. Yes. How? Hard. 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 Where? Hard. In, 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 in his, his office. office, right? In his office. Very good. What about the next one? What is going on with Alex? Go Alex to goes, goes to school, to school. By, bus. by bus every day. Every day. Very good. And what about the next one? I, I, I will. I will. Uh, probably, probably go, go, go shopping, shopping, shopping tomorrow. tomorrow, right? I will probably go shopping tomorrow. Very good job, my dear students. You see, you can ask these little questions when you create the sentences. It's like who, what, <laughs> where, how, what for, right? It is a little bit more complicated, but it helps for you to understand the different forms of the sentences. Now on this one, as we are uh, 12 in the class here, I am going to assign this one. And I am going to go from nine to 16. Number nine is going to be for Christia. Number 10, Olga. Number 11, Yvette. Number 12, Nelson. Number 13, Silvia. Number 14, Claudia Maria. Number 15, Manuel Antonio. Number 16, eh, Jose Carlos. Marlene, you are going to work on number nine. And Omar Francisco, number 10. The same, but you have a specific sentence for you. Let me see if oh, I remember yeah. your number. Do you remember your number? Yes. 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 Yeah. 11. Okay, you have to organize the sentence on your own. Okay. Okay, Cristia and Marlene, do you have number nine? Yes. Go ahead. I have Mr. Jones is is sitting com comfortable in front of the TV now. Okay, Mrs. Mrs. Jones, right? Mrs. Jones, porque es una señora casada, right? Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones is sitting comfortably, comfortably in oh, front of the TV now. No. Or you can say Mrs. Jones is comfortable comfortably sitting in front of the TV now. It's a very difficult verb. Like yeah. comfortable, comfortably, right? Even comfortable, it's a difficult verb, a difficult adjective. In this case, adverb. Right? Uh, Marlene, do you have it? Number nine? 
Yeah, is Mrs. Young is sitting comfort comfortably in front of the TV now. Very good job. Number 10. Go ahead. Number 10. I think it's for Olga, right? If not, Jose Carlos can help us with number okay. 10. No lo, he, no, lo, no lo he hecho hablar porque está enfermo. Ya, bebé. <laughs> ok. Teachers, creo que estoy confundido en la 16. <laughs> ok, go ahead. Uh, number 16, right? This poem sang wonderfully at the concert last night. Yes. Or last night at the concert. Hey, no, at the concert last night. It's okay. Um, okay. Pam sang wonderfully at the concert last night. Or you can say last night, Pam sang wonderfully at the concert. Okay. You can put it at the beginning. Okay. Okay, Yvette, go ahead. Um, Susan always rides her motorbike carefully. Okay, you can say Susan always rides her motorbike carefully. Or Susan always uh, carefully rides her bike. But the most common is the one that you have, right? Susan always rides her more bike carefully. That's that's correct. What about Nelson? Go ahead. Okay. Janet did her on my board very quickly. Last night. Very good job. Janet did her homework very quickly last night. Excellent job. Very good. Olga Marlene, go ahead. What what question which one? Uh, well, which one do you have ready? Mm. ¿Cuál tiene lista? Because I think yours was number 10. Creo que le tocaba la 10. The baby. Uh -huh. Slipped. Slept. All, all nine. The baby slept how? Peacefully. 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 Like, peace. All night. In, in, in his cradle, right? In his cradle. Do you know what's cradle? La cuna. In his cradle. La cuna o el Moises o el lugar donde duermen los levitos. Very good. What about Silvia? The microphone, sweetie. I cannot listen to you. Uh, the the plane arrived very late at the airport. Very good. The plane arrived very late at the airport. Very good. Let's see. Let's go with the next one, Mr. Manuel, and then Claudia. Uh, number 15. My grandmother normally goes early in the bed at night. Okay. It says, my grandmother... My grandmother normally, normally goes early the bed the night. Okay. Uh, did you create that one? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> you click the es hasta la hizo. Yes, because the, I don't have it there on the list, but it's okay. My grandmother goes uh, normally goes early to the bed every night very good but it's a very good sentence definitely. no it's okay it's okay it was very good it was very good uh, claudia maria go ahead paul certainly is going to write to the meeting okay very good paul center certainly is going to the meeting today okay he's going to the meeting today and let's see christia Ah, Christian disappeared. Oh my God. Eh, okay, Christian connected already. And we are missing, let me see. 
No, I think we did all of them, right? The oh. baby, the baby peacefully sleeps in his slept in his oh. cradle all night. Good. And I think we did all of them. Am I missing someone? Se me queda alguien? Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Claudia, buddy. Let's see, I'm going to, okay. So here we have, okay, we have the sentences there ready. And the last exercise that we have for the adverbs, right? The last exercise that we have for the adverbs, it's about choosing the correct answer, right? Here we have three options and I need you to choose one of them. And it says, you should eat if you want to lose weight. Least, little, or less? What do you think is the correct option for this one? You should eat if you want to lose weight. Least. Less. Little less. or less? Less. Less. Right, less. less. Very good. You should eat less. What about number two? Or team played of all the of all in the championship? The worst. The worst, right? Yeah. Or team played the worst of all in the championship. It's like we were more than bad, right? We were the worst. My new motorbike doesn't cost as as yours. More, most, or much? More. My new motorbike doesn't cost as as yours. More. more. As, as more as yours? Much. As much, right? In the case of money, when you are comparing with money, you use much. Yeah. Right, my new motorbike doesn't cost as much as yours. What about number four? The postman came than I had expected. The postman came than I had expected. Early, earlier, early, earliest, earlier. or earlier, 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 earlier. Because here you have, you see, a comparative form. Comparative. So you say, the postman came earlier than I had expected. Number five, today the children are playing than yesterday. More, more quiet, quiet, more quietly or quieter? More quiet. More, more quiet. Quiet, right? Quiet. More quiet. You don't say quieter. More quiet. quiet. And Colin speaks French less than I do. Better. Better. Better, right? Less because you say less well, it's not possible. Less good, it's not possible. Less better than I do, right? Because you speak French very well. Well, my dear students, we are going to go over a little practice on the manual, right? I am going to open the manual. We have a little practice on the prepositions of place and the prepositions, the frequency adverbs and the adverbs as well. There we go. And in this one, we have a little conversation and we have a specific adverbs, right? Consistently, properly, accurately, easily. We are going to start here. I am having I am having a bad time with my business. I am having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. Okay. I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper. What do you what is the meaning of a scrap of paper? What is the meaning of any scrap of paper? Cualquier pedazo. En cualquier pedazo de papel, right? In any piece of paper. It's like, ay, espérate aquí. Yes. Aquí anótamelo. <laughs> you write it everywhere, right? In any scrap of paper. And it says, the first step, the first step is to implement, oh, sorry. The first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record notes consistently, right? Spreadsheets are the ones that you create on Excel, right? Sure, I can do that. 
I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know. And look here, the labels are falling off the packages. Right? You put the packages like this. I have it there. And you just put the label like just like that. Christia, tell me. Uh, teacher, I just want to know if you can share the, the exercise. Uh, am I? Uh, In the screen. <laughs> sorry. Please. My God, I, I thought. I thought I was sharing it and I was and I was taking notes and I was marking and everything oh my god <laughs> el amor por eso no se enamoren ya ven eso pasa <laughs> ok again <clears throat> aquí no ha pasado nada ya ven los que tienen el manual impreso very good job Manuel very good job estrellita para ti Let's read the conversation that we have on page 35 on the manual. I am having a bad time with my businesses, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. Okay. I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper, Jorge. The first step to implement an organized inventory managed system is getting all your products and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off the packages. It's like, no, they are good. Look, look, <laughs> they are falling off the packages. By labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your product gets stored accurately in the right spots so that your employees can find them easily Lynn. when needed. <laughs> There you go. I, I, attention al cliente. I, I have it right here. Okay. People, new words or new vocabulary that you have in the conversation? Alguna nueva palabra nueva, frases nuevas? Or all of them are uh, well done for you? Let me erase my lines. Spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. Those are the ones that you create on Google on the ones that you create on Excel, right? A spreadsheet, oh, okay. it's like uh, any type of, uh, yeah, yeah, well, we'll let, let me just write, show you here. This one, for example, it's a spreadsheet, right? Here you can create different mm -hmm. things. You can work there, you can type your things. Here, for example, I have your attendance there, right? On my spreadsheet. So this is a spreadsheet. <laughs> I have the, the attendance there, okay? And there are some others in OneDrive, for example, that you can keep them there, that you can record and you can type comments and everything and you can share mm -hmm. them with your group of people, right? Las pueden compartir y pueden trabajar todos al mismo tiempo en la misma. Y ven, ven todo en tiempo real. Teacher. Yes? And what is the meaning of vendor? A vendor. The vendor is like the person who uh, gives you the products, right? It's like the seller, right? Similar to the seller, right? The vendor. Thank you. And for sure, if you say, for example, uh, imagine that you are selling earrings, right? And you're selling different types of earrings, right? So you have to know who the vendor is so you can identify when you need the product, you know who you need to call to get the product again. Any other phrase or word? Accurately. Accurately. Precisely. Right? Tiene que ser muy, pero con mucho cuidado, con mucho detalle. So it says, you ensure that your products get stored accurately in the right spots. Accurately is like in the correct place. En el lugar correcto. De la manera correcta y de una manera detallada, right? Accurately. For example, if you have, a, like in the supermarket, right, that you have the milk, the cheese, the juice, the cookies and everything, you are not going to have cheese in the cookies, right? Because they are stored accurately, according to what the place, the place that they need to be stored. Uh, when you have this one, for example, now you know, it's a phrase, right? It's like, hey, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. 
It's like what we use in Spanish. It's like, oh, ya sabes. Now you know. And we say, like, sure, I can do that. It's like, claro que puedo hacerlo. Sure, I can do that. And let me see the next one. Uh, I think it was just that one, right? The other ones are very, very common, very common words. Okay, pronunciation. Pronunciation questions. Any pronunciation problem that you have? No? Spreadsheets. Okay. Spread. Spread Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. Sheets with double E, right? Because if you change it, you're going to say something bad. Spreadsheet, right? Be careful. <laughs> Como diría mi madre, mejor que lo aprendan de mí. No vayan a decir cosas malas, right? Spreadsheet. Okay. Any other one? Consistently. Consistently. Properly. Accurately. Easily. Management. Management system. Information, recommend, I recommend you. And let's see, business. Don't say business, okay? It's business, inventory management. Okay, the first one, I am going to ask uh, Manuel, help me. You are going to be Jorge and I'm going to be Susan. And then we're going to choose another couple. Go ahead. I'm having a bad time with my business. Susan, I need some advice about venture management. Okay, pero ahora como que de veras está teniendo un, un mal momento con su business, okay? okay? You say, ah, I am having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. Go ahead. <laughs> having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. Okay. I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper, Jorge. The first step to implement an organized inventory managed system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you to do this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off the packages. By labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your products get stored accurately in the right spots so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Thank you. There Thank you, you go. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> now, my next Susan, yo escojo la próxima Susan y usted escoge al próximo Jorge. My next Susan is going to be Yvette. Okay. Uh, Next is, uh, it can be Omar a lady. Francisco. Omar Francisco. I think Omar it's it's working, but I don't know if you can okay. help. Omar. Danny, Anthony. I, no. Danny is having all. Uh, it's, it's always <laughs> having problems. Don't worry if it's a lady. We can change the name. Marlene Nicole. Okay, Marlene, Marlene Nicole. Nicole. Go ahead. Next. Marlene, you are going to be Jorge. Okay. Okay. And Yvette, you are Susan. Go ahead. Action. I'm having a bad time with a, my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. Okay. I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper, George. The first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your products and vendor information is on place. I recommend you do these spreadsheets and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here. The labels are falling of the package. By labeling inventory properties, you ensure that your products get stored 
accurately accurately in the, accurately in the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when needed very good job so marlene choose your next jorge and yvette choose your next susan um, rocio 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 is not here today she had she didn't have electricity Oh, um, Diana. Oh, Dianita was stuck on traffic. Yeah. And I, I don't know if she has arrived home. Um, let me see. We have Claudia, we have Cristia, we have Silvia, yeah. we have Tatiana. Cristia. <laughs> we... Okay, Cristia is Susan. And Marlene, um, who is the next Jorge? Tatiana. Tatiana. <laughs> Poor Tatiana was like, oh my god. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 Tatiana, it's okay. On the spot. <laughs> Action. Okay. Así me empiezo, eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm having a bad time with my business. Susan, I need some advice about inventory management. Okay, I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper. George, uh, the first step to implement and organize inventory management system is getting all of your products and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this is you do this in a spreadsheet sheet, sheet. spreadsheet a spreadsheet and record notes there. Consistently. Consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know. And look here, the labels are falling off the packages. By labeling inventory properly, you're ensure that your products get started accurately in the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Okay, thank you very much. Right, spreadsheet. Thank you. <laughs> because nice it's... being Jorge. Sorry. <laughs> spreadsheet. You cannot spread <laughs> spreadsheet. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's continue. The next Jorge and the next Susan. Tell me. The next Susan uh, is going to be Claudia. Claudia and the next Jorge. Uh, Nelson. Nelson, go ahead. Nelson, you are Jorge, and Claudia, you are Susan. Action. Hello. Your initial, sorry. Uh, yes, you start. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. 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 Okay, I see you keep notes in any scrap of paper, Jorge. The first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you to doing this on a spreadsheet. Sheet spreadsheet. <laughs> and record notes <laughs> there cons consistently. It's okay, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay, so I can do that. Uh, I did not be really high much attention to my knowledge. Notes. No, sorry. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off of the package. By labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your products get stored accurately in the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Very good job, very good job. Let's continue here. Nelson, who's next? Oh, let me see, let me see. We have Silvia, Olga, and I think just them, Silvia and Olga. Olga. Okay, Olga is going to be the next Jorge and Silvia, you are Susan. Okay. I'm having a bad time with my business. 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 
I need some advice about inventory management. Okay, I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper, Jorge. The first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do the... Sorry. You do... There you go. You do... This in a spreadsheet. <laughs> I recommend that you do this in a spreadsheet and record not there consistently. Consistently. Sure. Consistently. I, sure. I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the level, the, the labels label are falling of the package by lab labeling inventory properly. You ensure that your products get stored accurately, accurately in the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Very good job. Thank you, my dear class. Very good job. Remember, important things, important, important things. You say spreadsheet, spreadsheet, right? Consistently, properly, accurately, easily, labeling, falling off, falling off packages, packages, and management management system right and for sure business and inventory management right those are the words that uh, i just noticed that you have issues with but for the rest it was very good so the three questions for this conversation what are some of george's bad practices in inventory management can you mention what are the most common problems in the practice that george is having with his inventory Uh, keep notes on any scrap of paper. He keeps notes on any scrap of paper, right? That's the first thing that he's doing incorrect. What about the next one? Which other problems did you identify in the conversation? Okay. Is not uh, implement and organize uh, inventory management system. Okay, he hasn't, apply, he hasn't applied any type of inventory management system. What other problem is happening with the products? He's having problems with? The labels. The labels, right? He's not labeling the products correctly, right? Because the labels are just falling apart of the products, right? Whenever I go to a supermarket and the products do not have a label, I say like, okay, this is free. I, say, I will take it to my house. And they say like, no, 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 mira, it's el precio. Where? I say, it doesn't have. So to keep a good inventory management system, you have to be careful with the labels, right? Because he says that the products have labels, but they are falling off the packages, right? They are like, hey, and this, look, it's falling apart, right? And what are the recommendations to solve these issues? What are the recommendations that you remember from this? A plus for us as well, for sure. Implement an organized inventory management system. Okay, to apply an organized inventory management system. What is another recommendation that she gives? Record. Mm. Record this from spreadsheet. Record notes. Record yeah. notes, right? To take notes in, or in a spreadsheet, right? Not in the scraps of paper. What about the next one? To ensure that the products are stored accurately right 
store the products accurately because that is going to help employees to find them easily. And the last one, what is another suggestion you could give? Which suggestion you could give Jorge to have his inventory organized? ¿Qué le recomendarían ustedes? Imagine that you are Susan and you have to fix this problem. I don't know, teacher. I will say. You need to see. You need to see. <laughs> The, the same Susan. The warehouse. Okay, you need to see the, the warehouse. Place. Okay, what's yeah. going on? I will say hire a 3PL system. <laughs> so yeah. because if you cannot do it, hire someone who can do it. Please when 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 he stores the package. Yes, package. right. Have you considered outsourcing? Have you considered outsourcing someone? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is always good. In some cases, it is always good that if you cannot do something, there are a lot of people who are really uh, capable and they are really uh, passionate about their, their specific places and do the different activities at work. So if you don't know how to do it, hire a professional. And for sure, they are going to help you solve these issues a lot better because in some cases they say like, well, but I cannot use Excel. There are many administrators who can do it, right? They can help you administrate your, your business, right? So if you don't know, hire the, the necessary person or learn to do the things, right? Study a little bit more about how to do the things, okay? So this is what we were doing yesterday, right? What we were doing on Monday. Yesterday, I said. Sorry. The, the attendance. attendance. I am going to do it right now. I am going to call the attendance manual right now. And yes, for sure. No, don't worry. <laughs> it's like yo vine, yo vine, yo estuve ahí. Yeah. I'm okay. still here. I am still here. Carito is not here. She's in, in Troncal del Norte. Claudia Maria. Present teacher. Christian. Present teacher. Thank you. Diana. Ah, oh, Indianita didn't, didn't make it. Jorge also, or Jorge was also having difficulties with the weather. Jose Carlos, still here? Ah, he was very sick. Eh, Jose Rodrigo, Juan de Dios, also. Linda Yvette, also. Manuel Antonio. Here, teacher. <laughs> Miguel Angel Dominguez. Hey, Miguel Angel was here. What did, what happened to him? I saw him for a moment. Nelson? I hear the chair. Norma Carolina? Olga Marlene? Present. Rocio Veronica is in traffic, was in the middle of, I oh, know she didn't have internet or electricity. Rosa Beatriz either. Silvia Suleima? Present. Tatiana Michelle? Present teacher. Bill Maivet. Present. Marlene Nicole. Present. Omar Francisco and Danny Ann. Present. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, so let's do the final exercise that I had ready for you. In this one, we're going to work a little bit on definitions, right? Here, after the conversation that we read and everything, right, we have these specific definitions, right? And these ones were also on the platform. So if you did this exercise, you are going to remember. I need you to help me to organize them. What is the meaning of each of them? What is the matching of the result of each of them? Organize product and vendor information. Here you have the option. Create and submit accurate purchase orders. Receive inventory with speed and accuracy. Tag and label inventory and record your sales. So in this one, what definition goes with what? word. I need you to read them and if you know and if you have any idea with the matching you can mention it and we can write it down. For the first definition to organize products and vendor information which definition do you think it is? 
Number one, number two, three, four, or five? Number two. Number two, teacher. Number two. Yes. To get all your product and vendor information organized. Ching, ching. There you go. What about number two? Create and submit accurate purchase orders. Incorporate a purchase order system. To yeah. incorporate, uh -huh. what do you say? What about the rest? Okay, el público. Incorporate the purchase order. Yes, it's the number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Yes. <laughs> because you say create and submit accurate purchase orders. And to do this, you need to incorporate a purchase order system to make purchase accurate to avoid confusions. Very good. What about the next one? Receive and inv receive inventory with the speed and accuracy. The third. Mm, read them, read them. Receive inventory with speed and accuracy. The number one. Okay. If there, uh -huh. if there are a difference between the order you submit and actual inventory. Okay. Um, and it says, if there is a difference between the order you submitted and the actual inventory delivered, grab a copy of your purchase order to check and catalog all new inventory before it is put away in the stock room. Indeed, receive, receive inventory with speed and accuracy. You need to be careful not to have any, any difference between what you do and what you have. This is number four, right? This is number four. And the next one, tag and label inventory. Susan gave this recommendation to Jorge. Tag and label inventory because do the this. labels will fall in. Do this in your inventory and it will ensure customer and cashiers are not confused about yes. the product price. Yes, because they say that the labels were falling apart, right? And that the vendors were going to feel confused. And the last one for sure, it's going to be record yourselves. And it says, you want to record what product was sold, what's the product listed price, the discounts, and what the price was actually paid for the product. What price was actually paid for the product? Because in many of the cases, the same price that you have on your product is not the price that you give it on the market because they need to defer to have some earnings, right? To have some earnings there. So... In order to organize product and vendor information, what do you need to do? The number one, in order to organize product and vendor information. Get all, all get your product, 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 product and vendor information organized and in one place. And on place product, 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 product information, and description, shipping and shipping info. Include as well the business, business name, name and, and the business, business contact product. info. If you want to create and submit accurate purchase orders, what do you need to do? Incorporate, Incorporate a purchase a order system to make purchases accurate and, and, avoid purchase. and avoid confusions. What about if you want to receive inventory with speed and accuracy? If there is a difference in the order, order you submit and the actual inventory delivered, grab a copy of your purchase or purchase order and catalog all new inventory. Catalog all the new inventory before it is put away in the stock room. What do you need to do to tag and label inventory? Do this to your inventory, and it will ensure customer and cashiers are not confused about product price. The product's price. And if you want to record yourselves, 
You want, want to call the place the price discount and what price were actually paid for the product? What price was actually paid for the product? What price was actually paid for the product? Very good job. So in this case, as you can see, I had them already marked here for you. So you don't miss any of the information. Well, for tomorrow's class, we are going to work a little bit in the suffixes and the prefixes. Have you ever heard about them? Have you ever heard about suffixes and prefixes? ¿Ya han escuchado acerca de suffixes and prefixes? Yes or no? Okay. No idea. No, teacher. Okay, so it's going a suffix and a prefix. Sufijo y prefijo. Sufijos y prefijos, exactly like that. That's the importance of a Spanish grammar, you see. Suffixes and prefixes. Tomorrow, I am going to give you a little more detail about this one. For example, in this case, it's a suffix. A suffix is the one that you add at the end of the sentence, right? So in this case, you have manufacture, that it's a verb. And if you add the suffix er, you turn that one into a noun, right? So oh, yes, that's like the difference that you make. It is very okay. curious. Uh, cuando volvemos otra vez a las clases de grammar en español, si pusimos atención en lenguaje, vamos a acordarnos de esto. Right? <laughs> The manufacturer is the verb. Manufacturer, it's the person who do uh, the job, the person who does the job. And when you add ER, it's you transform it to a noun. Supply is the verb. But if you add ER, it's supplier. It's the person who supplies, right? For example, like teacher, right? What does the teacher do? <laughs> teach, right? Teach, teacher, right? So uh, in this case, you have distribute. Here, the suffix changes because it's OR. It's distributor, right, with OR. Manage, it's a manager. manager. What does the manager do? He manages, right? Manage. The, the leader leads. Yeah. Guia, yeah. right? The leader leads, right? Retail, retailer, right? Retail. Wholesale. Wholesaler. Sell, sell, seller. Sell. What about sell. singer? Where does it come from? Sing. 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 Right? Sing, okay. singer. Right? So these okay. are suffixes. But there are other words that are called prefixes. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un suffix y un prefix? The position. The position, right? The suffix is at the end and the prefix is in the beginning. At the beginning, right? It's social, for example, and you say anti-social. Anti is a prefix. So you say anti-social. Common, uncommon. Un, it's a prefix. So you say uncommon. Comfortable, uncomfortable. So you say un, in this case, it's the prefix. So that is going to be the topic for tomorrow. We are going to be working on this. And we are also going to be covering the platform. So uh, we're going to cover the last sections of it for you to check that you have everything done and complete. Okay. So we're going to go over every single exercise. We're going to cover all section four and the final exams tomorrow. So you can check that you have done all your exercises on the platform, okay? So uh, if you have any further question about uh, the platform before you finish, como les decía al principio, eh, pregunten para que no se les quede en el, en el uh, que se queden menos de 100%. En el caso de Tati, revise en, el, en otro navegador, porfa, para ver si le funciona. Así nos podemos quedar al 100% ahí completos. De hecho, lo revisé mientras estábamos en clase y sí, ahora que volví a entrar, ya estaba en inglés. <laughs> yeah, you see, it was the case of the, of the, yeah. The rainy. Yeah, it was the rain, definitely. 
So <laughs> for tomorrow, people, if you have the chance to actually investigate a little bit of the suffixes and the prefixes, that will be great because you are going to be ready for the time of the class, okay? I am going to stay for a couple of minutes with Marlene and uh, the rest of you. Thank you very, very much for being in class. And I am going to see you tomorrow for the next class. Have a beautiful night. Bye-bye. Have a beautiful night. Bye-bye. Bye, have a beautiful night. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Bye, Nelson. Have a good night. And thank you, Danny, that I haven't had the chance to listen to you during the whole week and the whole much of. Okay. Marlene, how are you? Hola, teacher. Hola, I'm pretty you? good. You're pretty good. Hey, we have been missing you a lot in classes. <laughs> sí, no, no había podido. Es que a veces uh, salgo muy tarde del trabajo o vengo manejando y no puedo conectarme. Sí, es muy peligroso que venga manejando. Y, y más que todas las noches está lloviendo y es como, ay, no, no me gusta. <laughs> Uy, de micrófono, Marlene. Ah, lo siento. Eh, pero sí, a veces es muy riesgoso como uh, manejo hasta aquí, hasta Ilopango, desde antiguo Cucatlán. Oh, yeah. Entonces, oh, yeah. a veces me tardo tanto en venir y a veces solo a medio me conecto, como ahora que solo me conecté al final. Sí, pero... sí. Sí, sí, de repente Ajá. decíamos nosotros, y Marlene, y Marlene, habían como tres, tres veces que yo decía, bueno, nos vamos a quedar en el one on one con Marlene. Oh, se me iba. Marlene. Lo siento. Lo siento. Yeah, pero so, sí. No, but it, it is okay. Marlene, have you had the chance to work on the platform? Um, yes. I is only missing for I don't remember one homework. I think. Uh, uh -huh, yes, you were you were missing just like 15%, I think. Solo le faltaba uh -huh. como el 15%. But it is, it is also, it's always good, right? And mm -hmm. in the case of the attendance, uh, Marlene, it is important that you're, uh, that you always announce, right? Try to announce when, when you miss the class and, and, and everything. Y eso le va a servir tanto para estos módulos como para los siguientes. Siempre, eh, de repente, si se le complica mucho, anúnciele a los, a los administradores ah, okay. para que le tomen en cuenta eh, el detalle, pues que viene manejando, que viene en tráfico, que viene en muchas cosas. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Porque, por ejemplo, en este programa no hay como el, el permiso así asignado que le puede decir, sí, Marlene, no hay problema, por medio uh -huh. del docente. Pero eh, tenemos que anunciarlo en administración, aun cuando este, o sea, sea parte, o sea, oyente, o sea... Eh, Depende de la clase, no importa, uh -huh. pero siempre como es bueno anunciarlo para que ellos vean del, el compromiso que usted tiene con el, con el aprendizaje, porque sí es, he visto ah, okay. que es bastante buena en, en, en los detalles, en contestar, en, en atender, siempre como el, a pesar de que de repente entramos como a, a media clase, se le facilita sí. bastante ponerse al, al, al tanto de lo que estamos haciendo. ¿verdad? Y en, sí, específico, sí. en específico, Marlene, algo en lo que usted sienta que tiene que mejorar un poco más o que se le dificulte mucho. Uh, no necesariamente así como un tema, solamente que sí eh, hay, hay cosas como que yo sé que a veces vemos las los temas como solo una vez o rápido, pero no, lo, lo bueno de usted es que está como repasando lo, las cosas, lo explica mejor para que uno se le vaya quedando, porque a veces uno de tanto se me puede quedar ahorita, pero ya mañana ya no me acuerdo. <risa> <risa> pero sí, ajá. Y ahí en mi parte, en lo personal, de practicar bastante, con, porque me cuesta mucho uh, como el listening, y es como, ay, porque, bueno, es que no sé, porque, bueno, a usted sí le entiendo y en las clases entiendo todo, pero digamos, si yo escucho a otra persona hablar inglés, como es súper diferente. <risa> Al menos con, con, con mi novio, él es de Estados Unidos y cuando se pone a hablar inglés es como, no le entiendo nada. <risa> pero yo, yo sé que uso otras palabras, eh, y eso es lo que me complica, que a veces las personas gringas como que acortan mucho las palabras, ¿verdad? Sí. Entonces cuesta más. Pero... Well, it is the same case as when they listen to us speak in Spanish. 
And they say uh -huh. like, oh my God, I don't understand anything about their Spanish because we talk very fast and we talk with our language and we talk with our sentences, we talk with our phrases. And it's like, ah, imagine an American person learning Spanish and he comes to the center of San Salvador en un grupo de personas, y me like, ay, no, I don't understand anything. Mire que yo, yo, o sea, para que él me entienda, hasta hablo bien raro, o sea, hablo como que si, en, como que, como cuando él traduce el inglés al español. Entonces, cuando habla con mi hermana, es como, no le entendí, me dice. Porque yo, yo como que traduzco literal las palabras en inglés para que él me entienda. Y a veces, cuando estoy escribiendo en inglés, es como, ah, si sí, en español lo dice así, así va en inglés y lo pongo, cosas así. So, yeah, Pero, in that, in that uh -huh. case, yes, the, the listening, actually. But in this case, you know, something that helps a lot is like, uh, for example, if you have very specific things that you like, for example, if you like series, if you like movies or things, try to uh, listen to them in English and to have the subtitles in English so you can check both. It's like, ah, yeah, they said this phrase. And to learn mm -hmm. phrases, not only the, the words, right? Because the problem in some cases is that we learn words, right? No aprendemos uh -huh. un montón de palabras. But it's better mm -hmm. if you investigate for phrases in English, mm -hmm. for phrases to communicate. So in that case, it's going to be a little bit better. And you are going to improve by learning complete phrases, complete paragraphs. And also, eh, I don't know if you like this, uh, any type of things like, I, I don't know, like movies, sports, anime, something specific that you like? Uh -huh. en, en películas, estoy... Trato de verla como en, así en inglés. Los pongo en, en audio en inglés y en subtítulo en inglés. Yes, that's, that's a Pero a veces, a veces cuando no entiendo mucho, como que me frustro y lo dejo siempre en inglés. O lo pongo en subtítulo en español o al revés. Y cuando ya veo y leyendo es como, ah, esto ah. es y tal cosa. <risa> Ajá, <risa> pero sí trato helps. como de ir cambiándole para que se me vayan quedando algunas frases. No, cosas that, así. That's really good. And also, for example, in the videos, right? If you watch videos about uh, phrases, about conversation questions, about how to answer, right? I remember mm -hmm. that at the beginning of the module, creo que al principio del módulo les envié un, unos videos de que es como inglés 24 horas. Vea. And uh -huh. you have different questions, you have different sentences, different answers, right? I'm going to resend it to all the group uh, uh -huh. maybe today or tomorrow so you can mm -hmm. practice right and you can listen i mean on, on your free time and you can get like to to listen all these different phrases to listen the different um uh, the way the different ways of speaking because english is very different from place to place i don't know where does uh, your boyfriend live what part of the united states uh texas that's why <laughs> <laughs> they they have an, a specific stress, right? They have a specific mm -hmm. intonation in all the different states in the United mm -hmm. States. Even I remember when I when I visited uh, in 2015. I mean, mm -hmm. I have been a teacher for the middle of my life, and I was like, ah, what did he say? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and in some cases, you feel kind of frustrated. You say like, hey, I didn't get it. But then I just come back and I change and I say like, hey, that's the way they feel when they listen to us speak in Spanish. And they say, no, no comprendo, no comprendo nada <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> so uh, that's, a very, that's a very good idea. If you practice a lot with this type of listenings. I have one video about uh, a very specific lady. I don't know if you saw it before about Emma. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to send you the videos again. She's okay. very good because she has this specific uh, accent when speaking. So it's very useful for you to train your ear with uh -huh. YouTube things. Maybe when you are on traffic, when you come uh, on the car, you can oh, listen, yeah. you can listen uh -huh. to this type of, of audios and it is going to be very helpful and beneficial for you to practice. Uh -huh. And ask your boyfriend to speak more English with you. Uh -huh. Only in English. Sí. <laughs> Siempre me dice eso, pero. Yeah, and no that, that can help you because he's a native speaker. I mean, qué mejor fuente de práctica uh -huh, para, than a dice, native speaker. Ni sé por qué estás estudiando si ya te puedo enseñar y yo, pero no es igual. <laughs> pero igual, creo que 
con solo estarlo, es como las personas que se van para allá de tanto escuchar lo que así aprenden. Yeah, that they, that they learn. Uh -huh. No, but try, try to speak only English with him and you will see that it will be a very beneficial thing. It's sí. difficult, <laughs> the difficult kind of frustrating at the beginning, but then it's going to be something normal. You will see. Sí, más que solo él habla español. Tengo que ganarme a la familia. <laughs> you, see, no van a you see, huh? You see, looking for the benefit, looking for the benefit, do it for the benefit. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, well, Marlene, uh, it has been a pleasure to talk to you, okay. and thank you very much. Remember just to check on the platform that you have everything complete so we yeah. can just move forward with that little detail. Okay, right. have a beautiful okay. night, thank Marlene. You. I'm going to see you tomorrow, hopefully. Good night, bye. bye, -bye. Have a beautiful night. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that's all for today. Thank you.